Um, it's been about 20 minutes, so I finished adding all of the 12 milliliters slowly into the flask, and each time I added the T-butanol, I closed the stopper and shaked it thoroughly, just like I showed it earlier, vented each time frequently, and then when I finished added all of it, then I shake vigorously for two to three minutes, venting each time, and then I put it back in the O-ring stand and let it stand for 20 minutes. It's been just a little bit over 20 minutes. Don't rush through this process. Like I said, this lab is all about efficiently playing with the temperature and also playing with this extraction part. You don't want to rush through, you'd still be able to complete. Now, if you can't get to all of it done today, well, you can finish the distillation, you can do the other purification stuff later. So this is a simple lab, but again, simple doesn't mean it's fast. So I've got a beaker. Label AQ waste, you can see it, it's flipped upside down, but it's AQ waste. I'm gonna collect all the aqueous waste in here. Now you can clearly see the two layers. The top layer is what we want, the bottom layer is what we don't want. The bottom layer is aqueous. It's got a lot of the unreacted hydrochloric acid. Remember, uh, in your case, the, tea, um, the, the T-butanol is your limiting and your hydrochloric acid is your excess. So there's probably a lot of unreacted um, hydrochloric acid. There's probably even a little bit of unreacted T-butanol because we're not really, we only hand shook this whole thing so we can't expect 100% efficiency. So we're gonna drain this into the aqueous waste and wait till you see when I do the sodium carbonate, you're gonna see some gillette foam, okay? Well, let's see if it will happen. All right, so without disturbing, I am simply going to, oh, never mind. I forgot to take the stopper off. It was sealed, so nothing was coming out. So I'm just simply going to drain the lower aqueous layer. I didn't open the stopcock all the way because I want to have a better control. I just let it drain. Now, keep in mind, this contains a lot of the unreacted hydrochloric acid. Okay, so it's pure hydrochloric acid, it's in there. We put 35 milliliters, assuming it's one to one, that means there's probably at least 23 milliliters of hydrochloric acid that's probably not reacted, that's still there. So you wanna treat this mixture carefully. You can dispose it off in your aqueous waste in your lab. But by the time we get to the sodium carbonate procedure in this particular, in this particular reaction, uh, we're going to be already neutralizing the strong acid with a weak base, so it's safe to dispose in your aqueous waste so that you don't actually foam up the entire aqueous waste container. All right, we're at the okay. There we go. All right, I got the top aqueous uh, top organic layer. It looks about right. I put about 12 milliliters. That to me looks like I got 12 milliliters back. So um, theoretically, I should be getting 12 milliliters back and looks like about 12 milliliters to me. So I'm going to stop here, come back with the next washing step. We're going to wash it with distilled water and then with sodium carbonate. And then we're going to extract the whole mixture into calcium chloride and hydrous to remove any water and then we're gonna to go to the distillation process. And when we distill, we're pretty much done with the experiment at that point because we've done all the purification now. All right, I'm gonna stop and come back with the washing. All right, I'm back. Um, now I got 10 milliliters of distilled water. Um, I'm gonna add it to this mixture. You can go in one go because we've already drained all the acid into it. What we're really trying to do is the T-butanol is a little bit soluble. It's not entirely soluble, but it's sparingly soluble in water, whereas the T-butyl chloride is not at all soluble in water. Okay, so we're just trying to extract that T-butyl alcohol and any leftover acid. I'm going to put the stopper back on, close it, make sure the stopper is closed, shake vigorously, vent it. You see, there's always the venting. You forget, you can stop this when you don't hear, see, I don't hear anymore, maybe just for good measure. Shake vigorously, vent, shake vigorously, vent, shake vigorously, vent, and close it. Put it back, 
let the two layers separate. Again, don't be in a hurry. If you do it, even the pace I'm showing you, I'm live recording it. So if you if you take the total time it, I've, I've put in there, maybe except for maybe a little bit of unaccounted time, if you follow it exactly the way I've done it here, I mean, you, you should have no problems finishing this lab on time. Just don't rush and necessarily don't take shortcuts. So, well, we are going to let this sit and I'm going to come back really quick with the next part. Keep in mind, the flask contains a lot of hydrochloric acid and the aqueous layer contains water. So don't open the stopcock and just let the water drain really quickly. You'll start to see this bubbles because you don't add water to acid, you add acid to water. But we're doing the reverse here. So just gently open the stopcock. You can clearly see the two layers. Let me move it close enough so you can see it better. Can you see it? There's two layers. All right. So I'm going to just gently open the stopcock and just slowly drain that water. See, I'm wearing goggles, and that's why. You see, I'm just dripping slowly. Maybe a little bit more faster would work. Oh, I keep doing this. I don't know why. I can't take the stopper off. Anyway, so... I'm just dripping slowly. I don't want to rush through. There's a lot of acid in that flask. Again, this could all be part of your aqueous waste. And what we're going to do next would also be part of your aqueous waste. And let's hope that we see the gillette foam. Okay. It foams up so beautifully. Because the sodium carbonate's got a lot of carbon dioxide. I think I just got it. Okay. All right, I'll be back with the sodium carbonate washing step. This is the water washing, we're done. If you want, you can wash it one more time, but I don't know if I need to, okay? I'm just gonna put the stopper back and I'll be back with the sodium carbonate washing. Back with my 5% sodium carbonate. And I'm, I don't wanna add all of it in one go because it's gonna bubble if there is any acid left over. If you don't see a ton of bubble, that means we've got rid of most of the... You can do this two times if you wish to get rid of most of the... Um, so any acid left over. So I'm going to put the stopper back on. Now be careful. Here you are going to generate CO2. So you don't want to go too long without venting. I'm gonna just put it back and let the two layers separate and I'm gonna extract the lower aqueous layer into the aqueous waste beaker I don't know if you can, guys can see it there's the beaker has been sitting there all this time so we we put the acid first then we put the water washing now if you let it separate you can see again two layers forming up let me take you in a little closer Can you guys see it? There's two layers. That's it. so. We're gonna drain this lower aqueous layer back into the flask, and then we're gonna see maybe if we have up oh, again. Keep forgetting to take out the stopper. Please do it. I mean, you're not gonna hurt anything, but you're never gonna be able to get the liquid out of here. Let's see if he makes some CO2. Yep. You can see it. 
I don't think you can see the beaker, but you can see a lot of bubbles coming through. I think it looks pretty clean. I don't, I see two layers consistently, so probably won't, don't want to do another sodium carbonate washing, but. Okay, all right. So that's all the washings. And then I'm gonna drain, I'm gonna add some so calcium chloride. Um, I'm gonna get another beaker and drain this layer, which is the organic layer containing the T-butyl chloride and put it in some some decent generous amount you don't need to weigh or anything just put don't put the entire container of calcium chloride I got some calcium chloride right here calcium chloride anhyd anhydrous I'm gonna put the organic layer in the um, calcium chloride salt and calcium chloride is a dehydrant so it's gonna suck out all the moisture out of that sample if there is any moisture and we'll have our t-butyl chloride ready for distillation so when I do that step, I'll show you. Okay, I thought it would be fun to show you exactly what I was talking about, the soap foaming bubbles. So I went ahead and added another 10 milliliters of sodium bicarbonate solution. Doesn't matter, you can do as many washings as you want. There is no set number of uh, washing extractions. You do it as, as long as you feel. If you, if you feel there's enough water, yeah, keep doing it or acid left in it. But mine looks clean, but I'm going to just show you the sodium car bicarbonate foam. Okay, that's good enough. I'm going to let the layers separate. I'm going to move the camera a little bit down at this angle. I guess you can see it now. Okay. I think it's kind of cool that want you to have that experience. I mean, you will see it when you do the lab. So the two layers are separated. I'm gonna just take this off this time. And let's see if we can see some generous foaming. It may not be great because we've already diluted the acid a little bit. Yeah, the acid's diluted from the earlier washings with the water but you can see the CO2 bubbles forming there's bubbles coming in the I don't think the camera is doing a good job picking it up so anyways this will be my last washing and I'm going to extract the organic layer into calcium chloride to get rid of any moisture and I'll be ready for distillation at that point I'll walk you through the most important step in the distillation which is not to overheat your sample okay all right i'll be back with the distillation setup here's what i did i took an erlenmeyer flask put some calcium chloride pellets in it and then put the organic layer that was left in the separatory funnel in here and gave it a good swirl you don't need to shake vigorously or anything if there is any moisture the calcium chloride would become solid like a lump and then absorb the moisture and i see yes there was some moisture that went through and then it's now removed with the calcium chloride. Now what we have here is nearly our product. At this point we do have the T-butyl chloride done. So it doesn't really take very long but I've been organized so I didn't waste any time. I had everything ready to go. Now I'm gonna stop here, put this organic layer that's in here into the round bottom flask and then set up the distillation apparatus and then I'll catch you up with the a paradise setup and then I'll walk you through the rest of the procedure. All right, I'll be back.